I'd like to make electrons move faster in these semiconductors. We would like to eliminate the impurity atoms so that the electrons can move faster. If they move faster, then the electrons will remember their quantum mechanical coherence, and then they can start interacting in a quantum mechanical way, and we can study the quantum mechanics of electrons much more readily. Hello, I'm Lauren Pfeiffer. This is my new molecular beam epitaxy machine. It has the best internal vacuum on the planet. Molecular beam epitaxy is a vapor deposition technique. We start with a substrate, of a, a single crystal of gallium arsenide, and we direct beams of gallium and vapor beams of arsenic at this crystal when it's heated to 600 degrees centigrade. That tends to make the crystal thicker, and the material that we deposit is about a thousand times more pure than is the starting crystal itself. This is the business end of the machine. These furnaces contain molten gallium, and we, they produce beams, atomic beams of gallium atoms that land on the substrate to make the gallium arsenide. This furnace contains molten aluminum. It produces aluminum beams that make aluminum gallium arsenide, which is a more insulating film than is gallium arsenide. These four cylinders are our four vacuum cryo pumps. The noise that you hear is the uh, piston mechanism in, the, in each of the four pumps that cool a surface to near absolute zero. When this surface is at absolute zero, all of the molecules inside of this pump, the gas molecules, stick. And that makes the vacuum superbly well, low. And with that very good vacuum, we are able to grow our our high purity crystals of gallium arsenide. But the cool thing is this little cookie here, which is a uh, cryo pump that's 10 kilowatts power and cools a cold finger that runs up here to 15 degrees above absolute zero. Normally an MBE has a, a liquid nitrogen chamber that's about 75 degrees above absolute zero. And this has got a finger that's 15, so it takes all of the impurities in that environment of the growth and traps them. And the machine makes a factor of five improvement in the vacuum. Gallium arsenide and aluminum arsenide together sort of make a wonderful pair. The aluminum arsenide, or an alloy of gallium and aluminum, makes this L gas that's an insulator, and the gallium arsenide is a semiconductor, a very good, and so you can make places for the electrons to flow easily, and, and you can make barriers to keep the electrons out in insulating ways. And the lattice constant between gallium arsenide and aluminum arsenide is less than one part in a thousand. So that means that you can make the crystal have, go from insulating to conducting to insulating with no changes, and no breaks in the crystal. All you're doing is changing the kinds of atoms in that local region. That's an accident of nature. We are lucky, in a sense, that gallium is, in fact, a quite pure material. It is possible to go and buy reliable supplies of gallium, which are seven nines pure. The problem is that we're trying for something like ten nines, and so when you can only buy seven nines, then, then there's an issue. I'm not sure if the impurity problem is in the gallium or in the arsenic. It could be in either. I think the checking of the quality is extremely important. Our proxy for quality and purity is mobility of the electrons in a two-dimensional system. We test that by putting a small voltage across a known sample and measuring essentially the velocity of the electrons. The higher the velocity, the higher the mobility. We'd like to get the quantum mechanical coherence length to about 10 to 15 microns. If we could do that, 
it's enough to see the whole structure with visible light in a light microscope. The future application for the moment is in quantum computing. I don't think there will ever be a perfect crystal because impurities are just part of our environment and we can only eliminate impurities to the extent that we're clever and building better equipment. There will always be some impurities. A perfect crystal would have a quantum mechanical interference that never degraded at all. So that I could have a path for quantum mechanical interference that was from here to the moon and back. I'm a compulsive perfectionist sort of a person, and to do one thing really well is a good goal to have. You become known for one thing that you're really maybe the very best at, and that's kind of a, a good place to be. This is the third notebook for this uh, new machine, but it's the first notebook we're actually running the machine, and so far the results look very encouraging. The mobility is rising rapidly, and we're, we're excited. And we're hoping that this will be a real advance for new studies in quantum physics.